All right, uh, port selection on the HP Dev 1, you're going to see it has, uh, this does do USB-C charging. You'll see the USB-C uh, charging on the other side, but it does have a combo headphone jack, two USB-3s uh, powered. And then on the opposite side, we do have the HDMI uh, power brick adapter and, of course, the USB-C charging uh, through USB-C. All right, so HP says this is a premium keyboard. It's an anti-spill. It does have a touch point um, device. This is glass. It's very easy to scroll across. It does have the super key. It does have backlight levels uh, for the keyboard. Okay. So it's your backlight levels. Uh, as far as the audio, I did cover that in another one. I'm not going to get uh, hit by YouTube again for a copyright strike. Um, but that's really the basis. Like I said, the key the keyboard is really smooth, has good travel. It's probably a mm, right about on par with my Starbook. So it's probably like a 1.8 millimeter. So it's really nice. It does have the similar keyboard layout, with the exception being is where I have a a dedicated sys request button. They actually don't have that on this. They actually have this button instead, which I have no idea what it does. And it is running Pop OS compared to Zorin. I have done some configuration changes on this to make it more Zorin like like I moved the time to the left I've done a couple adjustments here and there as far as the the interface uh, to get it closer to my Zorin PC right here so we have um on the HP Dev 1 you have a camera actual cover so you can see right there's to open it up right there's to close it a little bit on the display it gets very bright this is max brightness at a thousand nits very clear just for an example that's a 500 nit uh display so you notice it's much brighter than the 500 and of course that's a little 200 nit and it's really low and that's at max as well okay so here we have the three displays uh working i did buy the hdmi to display port and the other day it wasn't working out of the box, but it must have been a software update. This now works on USB-C. So you can actually use two USB-C devices. And I don't have another display, otherwise, otherwise I would try two displays plus an HDMI. But right now you can see it runs three displays. One's running uh, USB-C to display port, one's running USB-C natively, and then of course the main display. Alright, although it's not a gaming PC, you can see it runs uh, video games pretty well. As far as like indie titles, like it's not really that super hard to run, but um, just a few years ago, this now would not run on a uh, APU. And as you can see now, it's getting about 160 frames per second on this game, and I still have the two external displays plugged into, which actually affect the uh, the frame rate a little bit. But it's getting about 171 frames per second on Hollow Knight here. So it plays indie titles very well. Um, this game's not, like I said, it's not extremely hard to run, but it does. So on this, this is Life is Strange. Uh, you'll see it's averaging pretty close to 50 frames per second. This is actually at 1080p high quality. So it's running it fairly well as well. It's a pretty uh, condensed area of the game. So you're going to see it can reach points of 60 frames per second. Although this isn't part of the computer, it did come free. Um, and it does have a software specifically for Linux. This is the Creator Mouse. Uh, it's a pretty nice device. It is, uh, has programmable buttons. It can be Bluetooth or USB. And it works quite well.